I would say the importance of experiential therapies first and foremost is that it's fun, it's unique, it's new. So for that reason, it's something that our clients look forward to. I know oftentimes when we think of therapy, we're thinking about sitting across the desk from someone, just sort of your general talk therapy, you know, tell me what's going on with you. Talking about our emotions can make us kind of vulnerable or hesitant to share. Maybe we don't know how to do so. Utilizing different experiential therapy groups such as yoga or art or meditation allows the clients a different way to kind of express different feelings in a more indirect way. In experiential therapy, we're able to do something multi-sensory, something dynamic, tie it together with a lesson at the end where our clients can sort of realize that they've learned this lesson and sort of facilitated this on their own. So it really builds that level of self-confidence and, and being able to manage yourself. I believe that experiential therapies are so important because our life is our experience. When we get new clients coming in, they can take the skills with them that they learn into their life. So that transfers out into their relationships, into their responsibilities. It can also transition with them into the practices that they do in their daily life and routine. With the groups that I do in our experiential therapies, one of the main ones that I facilitate is yoga. Yoga means to yoke or unite. And so really focusing on the clients, using their breath, being aware of their bodies, to be able to feel a connection, to also be able to then gain a sense of release and disconnection. Because oftentimes a main feeling that people seek is a separation from thoughts, feelings, or emotions. And so being able to find that through a practice that they can actually connect with themselves inwardly, any of these experiential groups can kind of be tailored to the group in the moment and allow them to work with and release whatever energies that they have going on. So being the art therapist here at the adult campus, we offer group art therapy sessions as well as individual sessions. So those groups allow all the clients an opportunity to come down, try some new things, express themselves through painting, drawing, sculpture. It's very common for clients to come in here and get what we call it art room anxiety. <laughs> um, so I always encourage the clients, you know, this isn't an art class per se, I don't teach you technique. Uh, this is just a different way for you to explore and try new things. So we always encourage them to focus on the process and not their finished product. So just how they feel in the moment and just trying new things in general can be pretty liberating. With our horticulture-based therapies, our clients get the opportunity to adopt plants, plant new things, maintain and take care of their plants over time. And we're able to draw a lot of really interesting metaphors, especially regarding happiness, health, mental health, substance abuse and recovery, you know, as far as taking care of your plants, but also making sure you're maintaining and taking care of your own self along the way as well. We do drumming and other expressive arts here. Again, oftentimes our clients might not have the language to tell us how they feel, but they're able to drum it. They're able to drum their day. They're able to drum how they feel. They're able to express things in that way as well. When we come to games or when we go to the conservatory, or when we go to ropes course, they are designed to be a little bit challenging, right? We want to challenge the clients when they're here to try to defeat those old thought processes and try to come up with new coping skills, new coping strategies for them moving forward. We always talk about, you know, how did that change? What changed for you? How does that feel? Um, so it's not necessarily about just participating in the activity, it's also tying it into, did that make an improvement in my mood? Did that make an improvement in my anxiety? Did that improve just my attitude for the day? Do I have more energy? It ties into all of those things. We're not just looking for types of therapies that are going to help our clients in-house only. You know, what is the good of that? You know, our clients are spending over 99.9% .9 of their lives outside of here. Um, and the idea is to help them become the experts on their own emotions and their own mood. So that transferable piece of learning exactly which coping skills work for them and being able to explore that further in the future in their own lives is a major, major piece of experiential therapy, sort of that ongoing level of support that they can almost provide themselves. One of the main outcomes that I see with clients is acceptance. 
not only for themselves, but for those around them. As they practice together in these experiential therapies, they see how they act and interact and react, as well as their peers, how they act, interact and react. And they start to get a sense of camaraderie, they start to get a sense of humility within that as well too, just realizing that people are going through stuff. People are experiencing life in a different way and being able to accept that and be okay with that and realize that wherever they're at right now is good enough so that they can be open to being the next person that they can be.